from Florence, Italy. The city of inspiration for sculptors in ages past and for centuries to come. You're listening to The Sculptor's Funeral. Good day to you all and welcome to another episode of The Sculptor's Funeral, the podcast for figurative sculptors and those who love them. I am your host, Jason Arkels, a sculptor and art historian living and working in Florence, Italy, where all the great sculptors are dead, and I don't feel so well myself. And today, it's the Sculptor's Funeral Quiz Show. Now, seeing as how the world is under lockdown and we're all safely distanced from each other with a little too much time on our hands, thanks to our old friend, COVID-19... I thought we could have a little fun and do something different here on The Sculptor's Funeral. Now, a little while ago, I put the call out on the Facebook group page for the podcast for the most avid listeners of the podcast to call me up and test their knowledge of the many and varied topics we've covered in The Sculptor's Funeral. Now, the idea is that I'll do three episodes of this little quiz show, and the winners from each of these three episodes will then face off against each other in a final game. And what will the champion win? Well, nothing less than an official Sculptor's Funeral mug. And the undying fame that being a part of the Sculptor's Funeral will naturally bring them. But it's not really about the fabulous prize. This is all just really just an excuse for us to get together and maybe hear a little bit from one another and get to know each other a little bit. And and also, of course, to refresh our memories about sculptors and sculpture we've all learned about over the course of the last 82 episodes. So this episode was recorded over a series of uh, several Zoom meetings, and although I figured out how to do that eventually, uh, some of the audio quality in this episode is not all I could wish for, so my apologies in advance for that. All right, let's uh, get right to the first contestant. Hello, you're on the Sculptor's Funeral Quiz Show. Who is this? My name is Bruce Kleberger. I'm calling from Surrey, British Columbia, Canada. Fantastic. So what's it like in the British Columbia in terms of uh, uh, sculpture? You, you are a sculptor. I am a non-practicing dentist and a practicing sculptor. Fantastic. And I, uh, I have had the, the great opportunity to study with the Northwest Stone Sculptors Association for the last three or four years. And Jason, you were the uh, featured guest instructor at the Northwest Stone Sculptors in Southern Washington last year. And that's where we met, although I've been following the podcast for quite a while. Yes, I remember, remember very well. You were doing uh, portraits of your grandchildren. Is that correct? Excellent. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And they're looking right at me as I speak. Oh, really? Fantastic. You'll have to send me a a picture. Yeah. So I was, uh, I was teaching pointing out at the Northwest uh, Stone Sculptors Association. I wish I could be there this year as does I'm sure everybody else, because it's not happening this year, I imagine. Well, they have decided to uh, ask us if we would go if they hold it. So they haven't decided yet not to, but it would be a very different event. They have typically 100 sculptors on the field, and they're thinking if they did it, they would have to limit it to 50. They would have to feed us in shifts. We would have to live... Uh, in rooms by ourselves rather than in the bunks in the in the camp that we were living in before so it'd be a very different event yeah wow it sure would be it sure would be i mean that's the one of the great things about that was the sense of community but uh um well if it does go on um do you uh, do you plan to go if i can right now uh, the the united states is not doing very well uh, in its uh, ability to, to contain the epidemic. Yeah. And Washington State is where it originated, although they've done a much better job than the majority of the states, as it turns out. But I live on the border with the United States, and our border is closed for the first time in 300 years. So I'm not sure that uh, I'll be able to go. Uh, but if it's, a, if it's possible, and if, if it's available to me, I will certainly be there. Well, fantastic. Well, if, if you do... Uh... If you do go, please, uh, um, you don't need me to tell you to be careful, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I wish you and everyone there all the best. I, it was really, you know, I, I, I spent six months traveling last year from March to September, and uh, my week or 10 days at the uh, Stone Sculptors Association was one of the highlights. It was just fantastic. It was good. Great. 
All right, let's meet our next contestant. Welcome, Ali Pierce. Welcome to the Sculptor's Funeral Quiz Show. Thank you very much. You're calling from Wales. Now, have we met? We have, Jason. I thought so. Um, in uh, Melbourne Victorian's, uh, Victorian Society, uh, you did a great talk. Oh, I thought I met you in Wales. Oh, that is so funny. Yeah, I remember yeah. that talk very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was a good talk. Uh, it was a good talk. And I brought a friend who was uh, one of my colleagues when I used to work in Australia. Right. And she loved, she loved it too. So, yeah, it was great. Uh, so listen, just tell me a little bit about yourself. So I, I met you in Australia, but now you're in Wales uh, and you're, you're obviously from the UK, judging by your accent. Yes, um, I, yeah, I, I'm from the UK. I, uh, the reason why you met me in Australia is I used to do some teaching in Australia for Melbourne, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the primary of Melbourne Grammar School. Uh, so I was over there seeing colleagues and I just ha you happened to coincide with my travel plans. <laughs> so I'm Perfect. still a teacher. Um, I uh, teach uh, practice courses and do a bit of distance learning um, development for a program which is a, a fantastic program called Lifelong Learning mm -hmm. that allows uh, learners from all age range to access university uh, style courses, bringing people back into university or people who've never been into university to have the experience of a university education. So it's brilliant. Oh, so, but you are also a figurative sculptor, is that correct? Uh, no, oh, I trained in three, no, I trained in three-dimensional design. Oh, okay. Uh, ceramics. Uh, there's a good story here, but uh, I am um, I make mosaics. Oh, okay, so great. I have a business called Abba Dabba Do, <laughs> um, uh, so I make mosaics and I do talks on um, heritage sort of mosaic walks uh, around our town, which is Aberystwyth, uh, but only the year, last year my mum before she died announced that i was uh, a relative of charles sergeant jagger charles, charles sergeant. sergeant jagger no kidding no oh, kidding that's she fantastic. did it in a very lancastrian way and said yeah you've got a relative that's a sculptor and i at that point i said and why didn't you mention it when i was studying three-dimensional design <laughs> <laughs> at the tender age of 97 then she said yes well i forgot about it huh. uh, <laughs> that's fantastic yes. now he only yes. died in the late 30s so mm. is he is he a grand like a, is he an uncle or he's he's a uh right so my mother's jagger so one up was a headmaster the one up one up again was another headmaster uh <laughs> and then it, another uh, an uncle up from there that's wow. the, the, the link. Wow, yeah. but your mother's maiden name is Jagger. Wow, that's fantastic. So that, yeah. does, wait a minute, I, that also means you're related to Mick Jagger. Uh, on a sort of, <laughs> that, really is a, that really is a thin, a yeah. thin wire, but that's, he's from sort of the Whitehaven family, which is, um, yes, that came away from Yorkshire to Whitehaven, yeah. Right, because no. I know, I know uh, Sergeant <laughs> Jagger is related to Mick Jagger in some way, so. Mm. Wow, that's fantastic. You're, you're practically yeah. a celebrity yourself. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time to bring in our third and final contestant. So I'm Liz Little. I'm from Endicott, New York, but I live, I've lived in New York for the last 11 years. Mm -hmm. uh, when you say you lived in New York, you mean New York City? Oh, yeah, New York City. Oh, fantastic. So how are you? I'm good. This is um, a final, final exam week for me. So this has been like a hectic semester. Um, definitely like I'm supposed to be graduating this semester. So it's just like really bizarre that all of a sudden school just stopped. And now I'm just like in a room by myself all the time. That's crazy. So like, are you doing like, how, how is your schoolwork proceeding? Is it through uh, social media like Zoom and that sort of thing or? Um, so they have this online platform called Blackboard, and so it's kind of like Zoom where they have this thing, it's like Collaborate Ultra. Um, so the professors are just doing like video recordings and um, sharing their screen with like PowerPoints and stuff. How is that working for you? Um, it's okay for some of the classes. Like it has pros and cons. Like 
because if my class starts at 9.30, I can wake up at like 9.25 and still make it to class. <laughs> right, right. And only, only dress the top half of yourself. Right. It's, and we don't even have video. So like I could just be there in my pajamas and everything's fine. Oh, um, great. But then like for the lab classes, um, so I'm like a psychology major with a minor in biology. Mm -hmm. um, so for the biology classes, like I'm taking four biology classes this semester. So all of a sudden it's like, oh, we can't do any labs, but you know, for the hands-on like practical stuff, um, they're just like, oh, okay, read the lab that you were supposed to do, make up some fake data and like write up a lab report on it. So it's really hard to like understand what's going on. Wow. That's crazy. That's, yeah. that's yeah, pretty nuts. So you're a psychology major and a biology minor, did you say? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So are you also a sculptor? Yes. Um, so I started at the Art Students League um, like five years ago. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I got this crazy idea that I was going to go to school and do something that would allow me to study anatomy so that I could be a better sculptor. Right. Because I was like, I was just waiting tables and I was like, this sucks. I don't want to do this anymore. So, um, you know, I was like waiting tables all day and then I would go like waitress or take dance classes and all that stuff so it's like all right I gotta do something else so um one day I showed up to the art students league and like there was this amazing hand and I was like who did this and it turns out that it was a physical therapist oh, who cool. like started sculpting so that kind of like planted the seed I was like well maybe I can just like go study anatomy and so that was kind of the plan plus I didn't I didn't really want to go to school for art and then um end up like being a waitress again after I graduate so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it turns out I'm just uh gonna do that anyway because I'm starting my master's in the fall uh, oh, wow. and so, yeah yeah so I kind of decided to jump ship on that whole plan because so now I'm kind of like backtracking um I applied like actually I wasn't even planning on applying I was gonna apply for PhD programs in anatomy and neurobiology um mm -hmm. in the fall but then I was like you know with this whole COVID thing and everything is like offline right now. Um, it seems like this is a good time to go do a sculpture MFA because. Wow. Wow. So you're getting a master's in sculpture. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. I'm so excited. Um, that sounds like a fun time though. It's fun. I think um, like I was talking to my sculpture mentor. So at the Art Students League, I've been studying with Barney Hodes. So mm -hmm. shout out to Barney if he's listening. Uh, <laughs> like, shout out. It's That's like, awesome. oh yeah, we're not. Um, but well, I was talking to him and he was just kind of like, you know, I think that at some point you have to just like focus on what you really want, which is ultimately like, I just want to sculpt. So I'm kind of doing all these other things that are like not helping me be a better sculptor. So Mm. yeah it's been it's been a mess but it's okay yeah it's definitely not like the straightforward route like sometimes I'm like why didn't I just like move to Florence and go to school? <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know I know what you mean I know what you mean I didn't I didn't just decide to be a, a sculptor and then move to Florence I arrived here by an incredible series of crazy accidents um, starting off in a completely different career field and you know I just sort of accidentally stumbled into the the possibility to to start studying here and and the rest is history so everyone finds their own way and yeah I guess that's like when I started at the league too like I wasn't like oh I want to learn to sculpt it was just kind of like I sculpted in high school and then I like really missed it and one day I just kind of like wandered in I didn't mm -hmm. know what the league was and then all of a sudden it was like oh okay you can sculpt here and then I ended up staying for a long time so fantastic yeah all right, Bruce, Allie, and Liz, let's begin. Now, how this works is I'm going to give you a series of seven questions. They're multiple choice, and the answers to all these questions can, of course, be found within the episodes of The Sculptor's Funeral. So, if you have listened to them all and have remembered everything, you should have no problem whatsoever. Now, each correct answer is worth one point. Are you ready to play? I will do my best. Yeah, I hope that I can answer some of them. <laughs> oh, I've been following the podcast for years, but to be honest with you, I don't remember all of it that I first heard two years ago. So uh, let's see what happens. Okay, here goes. What sculptor 
wrote their autobiography while serving four years under house arrest? Now, was it A, Benvenuto Cellini, B, Antonio Canova, or C, Jean-Baptiste Carpeau? Oh, wow. Uh Four years under house arrest. Mm. Which of those three was the bad boy? Cellini, Canova, Carpo. Mm. Look, I, I don't know. I'm going to hedge for Cellini. Cellini. Cellini, yes, exactly right. You got it. Um, a, Cellini. Cellini, very good. Easy okay. one. Yeah, see, I told you these would be easy. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic, yes. Horrible human being, pretty good sculptor. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, he wrote his autobiography, the first written by a, a sculptor, um, simply because he had nothing else to do. He was sentenced to four, four years house arrest, so he, he thought there was no better time but for him to sit down and record just what, of a, what a fantastic... So had, had he, he done Perseus by then? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, he had, because he, but, it's, uh, yeah. his autobiography is a fantastic resource for how they were casting bronze in the high renaissance. Oh, okay. He, he, yeah. It's not quite a step-by-step process, but he, it really is, um, it provides more insight than just about any other single source into how they are working at the time, so. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's worth a read, definitely. Yeah. All right, Liz, who once exhibited a sculpture so apparently lifelike that he was accused by the press and by other sculptors of exhibiting a body cast instead of a work he had modeled in clay. Was it A, Jean-Baptiste Carpeau, B, Auguste Rodin, or C, Jules Deloup? Uh, B, Rodin. Very good, no hesitation. I wouldn't have guessed either three. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. Do you want me to repeat the question? I know the question. Okay. But you could repeat the answers. (laughs) Sure, sure, it's either A, Carpeau, B, Rodin, or C, Delu. Carpo. Carpo, I'm afraid, is not the right it's answer. then. In, uh, no, it was Rodin. <laughs> Rodin, really? Yes, I remember the episode. Okay, Allie. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Wow. Made a big to-do um, at the time. People were sure he had just made a body cast. Carpo, Rodin, Delu. Hmm. I want to say Rodin, but his his the sculpting's quite rough. Yeah, loose and free, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Delu. I'm afraid <laughs> it was Rodin. It oh was Rodin. God! Yeah, yeah. It's funny. Of course, it's yeah. You wouldn't think it, you know, just by you know based on his work. But in his uh, earlier work, and I say early, it was probably about forty at the time. One of his first life-size sculptures he did is called The Age of Bronze. And uh, it's just a nude male standing, uh, looking as though he used to be holding a spear, you know. Uh, yeah. And um, yeah, it was just a very, very faithful reproduction of the model. Well, I think they need, sure. probably need to go to spec savers then. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it was just his eyesight that decreased rather than yeah, yeah. else. But no, it, it was Auguste Rodin and uh, accusations were made in the papers. And, um, you know, photographs of the model were distributed to show that, uh, although it looked very much like the model, it couldn't have been a, an actual cast and measurements okay. were taken and all this sort of thing. Uh, but it, it sort of gave uh, Rodin a little bit of uh, notoriety early in his career. So, you know, not, yeah. not a bad thing, right? All press yeah. is good press. Indeed. Okay. Question number three. Here we go. In the 19th century in Florence, Lorenzo Bartolini scandalized the Accademia di Firenze, where he was a teacher, by bringing in which of the following to pose nude for his figure class? So did he bring in A, a monkey, B, a hunchback, or C, his wife? What uh, period of time is this? This is the 19th century. So Lorenzo Bartolini was teaching uh, Mm. in the early 19th century. It would have been, oh, after... After 1830, but before 1850. Oh, goodness. I'm going to say his wife. His wife. I'm afraid it was a hunchback. And this I don't remember at all. Oh, yeah. No, this is a really interesting thing about Lorenzo Bartolini. So um, uh, 
they chose a theme. They were working on a figure project and they chose a theme to sculpt uh, Aesop, who is the um, you know mythological storyteller, Aesop's fables, that sort of thing. And traditionally, he's always been uh, represented and, and described as a terribly deformed person. And so Bartolini, who was gaining, getting more interested in in naturalistic work, you know, sort of breaking away from neoclassicism, thought it would be a good idea to bring in someone who would resemble this sort of character. And it scandalized not only the school, but it was sort of the talk of the academies in Europe all over. All right. Liz, did he bring in a monkey? A. B. A hunchback? Or C. His wife? A hunchback. Wow. Killing it. Thank Three you. Three points. Very good. Very good. Question number four. In the 6th century BC, a common motif found in Greek sculpture was a smiling mouth. Now, is this smiling mouth commonly referred to as the classic smile, the archaic smile, or the Hellenistic smile? This is a, from a recent podcast. So once again, we're looking for the name for the smiling sculptures from the 6th century BC. Uh, a, the classic smile, B, the archaic smile, or C, the Hellenistic smile. And one clue might be 6th century BC. I'm going to say archaic. You got it. Archaic smile is correct. Allie, the classic smile, the archaic smile, or the Hellenistic smile? Archaic. Yeah, there you go. You knew that one. Very yeah. good. The archaic smile. My, my knowledge is very narrow. <laughs> <laughs> 6th century BC, of course, would be a giveaway if you know yes, your time periods. Yes, very good. Liz, the classic smile, A, the archaic smile, or the Hellenistic smile? Archaic smile. Archaic smile is correct. Very good. Question number five. Who invented stacciato relief? Was it A, Augustus St. Gaudens, B, Jean-Antoine Houdon, or C, Donatello? Oh, this one I might not get. Uh, Stacciato Relief. Do you know what Stacciato is? Yeah, Stacciato that, relief. okay, so I tried my first relief sculpture like a month ago, and it was oh, cool. horrible. I was like, how did they do this? I don't understand. I'm like drawing, but I'm sculpting and I'm just really confused. So it gave me yeah. a whole new appreciation for us. Like, maybe I should look into that Satato relief thing Jason was talking about. Um, <laughs> let's and see. So who invented it? I've talked about it a couple times in a couple different episodes. Yeah. So um, uh, your, your, your choices are again, A, Augusta St. Gaudens, B, Jean-Antoine Houdon, or C, Donatello? I feel like it was St. Gaudens, but that's just because there's so many reliefs in the image gallery when I was looking at it before the mm. podcast, so I don't know if that's right. Is that your, is that your choice? Yeah. Oh, so close. Oh, uh, no. I guess St. Gaudens did tons of fantastic relief work, and in fact, in my opinion, he was uh, even better than the inventor of Stacciato Relief, which of course was Donatello. Bruce, who invented Stacciato Relief? Was it A, Augustus St. Gaudens, B, Jean-Antoine Houdon, or C, Donatello? Who invented Stacciato? Donatello. Oh, very good. Donatello is correct. Stacciato Relief, invented in the early years of the 15th century. Very, very good. Allie. Um, mm. You want me to read the choices again? Yeah, I'm hovering on gardens, I think. But um, but Donatello was really early. Mm -hmm. And although the David is all nice and smooth and gorgeous, uh, Mary Magdalene... Of course, that's not a, so. not a relief, is it? No. Okay, uh -huh. good. Thank you. Nice hint. <laughs> nice <laughs> so hint. the other two were? Okay, it's A, a? Augusta St. Gaudens, B, yeah. Jean-Antoine Houdon, Mm. Or C. I, I think it's Gardens. You think it's Gardens? I do. 
It's Donatello. Oh, you're joking. Yeah. Well, I didn't cool. know he did. Oh, oh, oh yeah, he, he invented it. But you're not too far off in, in sort of crediting Gowden's for it because he probably, I mean, in my book, he, he did it better than anyone else ever has. But it originated with Donatello. He did a predella, oh, nice. a, little, a little relief of St. George slaying the dragon beneath his... Yes, okay, yeah, I know that, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's the first I was thinking relief. David. Yeah, all yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. Number six. Allie, who organized a national show of art called the Degenerate Art Exhibition? Was it A, Lorenzo de' Medici, B, the Nazi Party, or C, Louis the Fourteenth, King of France? The I think it's B. B, the Nazi Party. Yeah. You, you are correct. Very good. So, Liz, oh. the Degenerate Art Exhibition. I feel like it was. Oh, I'm gonna miss this one too. What are the choices again? A. Lorenzo de' Medici, B. The Nazi Party, or C. Louis the Fourteenth, King of France. I feel like it was the Nazi Party, but I don't know why. Is that your answer? Yeah. You are correct. It was the Nazi Party. <laughs> very good. Very good. Yeah, that that's all the way back from my first, uh, very first episode when I talk about the end of figurative sculpture in, oh, in, wow. in the okay. 20th century. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the Nazis organized uh, a show um, uh, basically to showcase everything that art shouldn't be. And so it included things like modern art, abstract art, and Jewish art as well. Okay. So, yeah. Was it A, Lorenzo de' Medici, B, the Nazi party, or C, Louis XIV, King of France? A national art show called the Degenerate Art Exhibition. Oh, I think it was the Nazi party. You are correct, sir. It was the Nazi. Yeah, I vaguely remember that. Now that, Ooh, that, goes, that, that goes back. That's the very first episode. All right. Last question. Bruce, who helped organize the earliest version of the École de Beaux-Arts in Paris under the auspices of King Louis XIV of France? Was it A, Bernini, B, Houdon, or C, Francois Rood? So who helped organize the earliest version of the school in Paris known as the École de Beaux-Arts? And I'll, I'll give you a clue. When it, when it <clears throat> first started up, it wasn't known as the École de Beaux-Arts. It developed that name after a while, but under the monarchy, it was known as the Académie Royale. And the, um, the list again? Yes. A, Bernini. B, Houdon. C, Francois Rude. I have to say Udon. I'm afraid it was Bernini. All the way back. <laughs> <laughs> the, the French, the French, uh, Italian thing that got me there. I was going to say Bernini, but I knew that. Uh, right, right, exactly. Born. He wasn't born. He was moved. Right. He moved to France. He moved to France. Well, yeah, only briefly. He was there for uh, for just a little bit, uh, and it's at that time that he actually sculpted the portrait of Louis the Fourteenth, as well. Yeah. So, yeah, 1648. Very good. I yeah. don't know why that comes to my head, but there you go. There you go. Half point. You know. uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, who organized the earliest incarnation of the Ecole de Beaux Arts in Paris? Was it A. Bernini, B. Houdon, or C. Francois Rood? Houdon. I'm afraid not. Oh, no. no. It was Bernini, which is really interesting because he's yeah he's the only Italian on the list. Should have known that. Yeah, the other guys came later. So. Oh yeah, so, I, that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh no, don't see too late. But yeah. Mm. So A Bernini, B Houdon, or C Francois Rude. <sighs> Louis um, the Fourteenth. Louis the Fourteenth. Yeah, yeah. So um, that, that's a good yeah. hint. Oh. <laughs> If you know your French, if you know, I'm a very English centric here. I'm uh, Udon, probably. It was Bernini. No, yes, really? Yeah, because he's. Oh. He, well, he was the only one alive during the time of uh, Louis XIV, for one thing. 
Wow. Yes. Yeah, Bernini. Shot. <laughs> well, you did okay. You got you got three out of seven. <laughs> oh, is... story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's it's not over yet. It's not over yet. That was just round one. Now we're coming okay. to round two, and this this is going to be a fun one. Uh, and right. was, <laughs> as, right. as opposed to what came before. <laughs> it's more torture. <laughs> Right. Okay. So what it is, it's a speed round, right? So oh, you're going to have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as you can. Oh, the, no. <laughs> but the, no. The questions are simple because all I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the title of a sculpture and you're going to tell me who sculpted it. All right? Easy. Uh, right? Oh, well, I'll, I'll go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you better go for it. You're <laughs> you know, I'm committed now, aren't you, I? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. There's no turning back. <laughs> So there are 10 questions or 10, 10 sculptures that I'm going to name in total. And um, if you don't know the answer right away, don't worry, just say pass. And yeah. I'll, move, I'll move on to the next one. And when we get to the end of the list, I'll go back to the others if there's time. Okay. Okay. All right. Now each question yeah. is worth half a point. So a total of five okay. possible points available in this round. Okay. All right. It's going to be easy. And mm -hmm. the timer will start uh, after I give you the first name of the sculpture. All right. Are you ready? Yep. Here we go. Ugolino and his sons. Pass. Okay. The Rape of the Sabines. Oh, Jean Bologna. Very good. The Piccadilly Fountain. Oh. Uh, lantern or pass. It, it's one of the new sculpture. Move. Mm -hmm. pass. move on, move on. Okay. The Apollo and Daphne. Bellini. Very good. Mary Magdalene. Oh, Donatella. Yes. The Gates of Hell. Uh, oh. I mean, uh, Rodan. Yes. Moses. Pass. The Three Graces. Oh, God, I should know this. Pass. The Doriferous, or Spear Bearer. It's polyclitus, I Yes, think. yes, it is. Statue of Liberty, you got three seconds. Oh, um, Statue of Liberty. Uh, Bartolini or something like that. Oh, so close. It was Bertoldi. Bertoldi, oh, so close Bertoldi. though. Uh, that, you did really well on that. So, you ready? Yep. All right, fantastic. Let me uh, just, the, the 60 seconds will begin when I finish giving you the first title. And here we go. All right. Ugolino and his sons. Bartolini. Uh, nope. Okay. Uh, Rape of the Sabines. Bernini. Nope. <laughs> uh, the Piccadilly Fountain. Nope. Pass. Okay. Apollo and Daphne. Bernini. There you go. Mary Magdalene. Pass. Okay. The Gates of Hell. Mm, that was uh, Bernaschi. No. Nope. No, Gilbert, Gilberti. Gilberti. No, that's all right. We can no. go back to it. Uh, Moses. Michelangelo. There you go. The Three Graces. Uh, that was... Five seconds. Jean Bologna. Oh. Doriferous or the spear bearer. Pass. Oh, and time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Need so to spend more the, time in Italy. <laughs> out of the, yeah, you do. Everyone does. Um, out of those 10, you've got two. You got Apollo and Daphne, and you got Moses. Uh, two half points bringing you to a total of one point for the second round and a total of five points for the game. All right. Very good. Very good. Are you ready to play? Ready. Okay. I'm going to start the clock as soon as I finish giving you the name of the first sculpture. So here we go. Ugolino and his sons. Carpo. Yes. Rape of the Sabines. John Bologna. Yes. The Piccadilly Fountain. Uh... St. Gaudens. No, I'm afraid not. Okay. Uh, Apollo and Daphne. Bernini. Yes. Mary Magdalene. 
Boom. Uh, I should know this past. Okay. The Gates of Hell. Rodin. Yes. Moses. Oh, uh, Michelangelo. Yeah. The Three Graces. Mm, Canola. Yeah, very good. The Doriferous, otherwise oh, known as the Spear Bearer. Oh, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The Statue of Liberty, and you got six seconds. Oh, uh, shit. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, wait. Edit that out. Uh, Bartolini. <laughs> Oh, so close, and time oh, is up. Oh. oh, man. Oh, I want to give you that. I know. I miss it. That's okay. Yeah, oh, Bartoldi, God. very good. And you're, you're not the only person to, to answer Bartolini. So do you want me to read off the ones you didn't get? Uh, to... Yeah, go on, because I think I knew some of them. But I'm sure the pressure you did. Was too much. Yeah. Ugolino and his sons. Any idea? No, Carpo. No, no. Jean-Baptiste Carpeau's masterpiece. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. No. Uh, the Piccadilly Fountain. You're going to kick yourself. I was thinking, if anyone gets this, because you're the only it's one from lantern, the UK. It's Lantern, is it? Lantern. No. No, it's you one of the new sculpture movements. Slots, yes. Isn't it? It's Alfred Gilbert. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, the Moses was, was Michelangelo. Oh, God, right? I should know that. Yeah. Yes. The Three Graces. Actually, lots of people have sculpted the Three Graces. Um, the most common one would have been, of course, by Canova. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. And then the Statue of Liberty is Bartholdi. Um, do you want to hear uh, what you missed? Statue. Yes. So Ugolino and his sons, that's Carpo. Okay. Right? Uh, the Rape of the Sabines, uh, you said Bartolini. It was, uh, or no, you said Bernini, I think. Uh, it was John Bologna. Um, the Piccadilly Fountain, that was the tough one. Uh, that is Alfred Gilbert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Mary Magdalene. Uh, several people have sculpted Mary Magdalene, uh, and I would have given you credit for any of them, but I was kind of looking for Donatello. You know, the the wooden, the gilt wooden uh, statue right. of Mary Magdalene. That he right, yeah. towards the end of his work. Exactly. The Gates of Hell. I'm surprised you didn't get this one. Rodin. Yes. Yes. The Three Graces. Again, a lot of people have sculpted the Three Graces. I would have accepted any of them, but Canova um, would have been the one I was really looking for. Doriferous, the spear bearer, that's Polyclitus. And then we didn't get to the 10th question. That was the Statue of Liberty. Any ideas? I know he was French. Uh, it's uh, Auguste Bartholdi. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Five points. All right. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Now I love to be you... tested. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Excellent. You did a great job. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for my lesson. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So what, what you got there, you got uh, two and a half points uh, yeah. for a total for the game of five and a half points. Let me count this up. So you had five points in the first round, and then you got one, two, three, four, five, six for another three points, giving you a total of eight points. And guess what, Liz Little? You have won the first no episode. Yes, yes. Holy moly. Congratulations. With eight points, Liz Little is this week's champion. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, great. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have you back on to compete against the other winners of the next two episodes in a final game. And I want to thank you, Liz Little, as well as Bruce Kleberger and Ali Pierce for playing along with me today. And until the next round of the quiz show, which will be coming out soon, I hope you all have a productive week. <laughs>